Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel and welcome to the start of today's reading vlog. This is gonna be my second reading vlog for the amazing Readathon, um, which is hosted by Brie from Four Paws in a Book, Go Team Fiction. Hi, today is Saturday, June 8th. It is like the first full week of the readathon has basically been completed. I'm basically starting this vlog like right after I ended the other one. So yeah, literally picking up right where we left off. So I completed prompts one and two in the first reading vlog. If you're interested, I'm gonna leave the video link down below. Um, but we are now on to city number three, which is Berlin. And the prompt for Berlin is to read a book featuring movement in the title or basically reading a book with a verb in the title. If you can say, I can blank, then it counts pretty much. For my book, yes, I am on the literary fiction team, but I do have a list of books that I had to read during this month. And this book is one of them. It is called When the Moon Hatched by Sarah A. Parker. It is a chunkster of a book. And I committed to a buddy read with my friend Camille from Camille on Books on Instagram. She is an absolute gem. Go check her out if you don't know who she is. Love her to pieces. Absolutely would recommend following her Instagram. But we are going to be buddy reading this book and we have been wanting to buddy read this book for months. Okay, we we talked about this like in March or something like that. And then both of us, we like kind of tried to start a buddy read and both of us got distracted with other books we were reading and then we just kind of like put it off and now we're going to be reading it this month. So she just started it and I just started it. I literally have read like... 10 pages of it. Good vibes. Good vibes. I don't want to be too overly ambitious when I say that I think I'm really going to like it, but it's... I really do think I'm going to like it. The writing, it's... The, the vocabulary is... It is rich. The word choices are incredible. Like it, oh my gosh. This is a beauty in the English language. This author very much seems like she, she knows how to use language and words very well. Like they're very descriptive and they're very just prominent and like she's not repeating phrases. And, and, and just the way that the writing is flowing is so beautiful. It is very beautiful prose. Like it's like, it's a, it's a prosy kind of writing. She's not keeping it very straightforward like she's very much embellishing the sentences in a in a very nice way and it's not um annoying to me it's it's very beautiful and i'm i'm really really excited to see how this book is going to develop i already am really enjoying the world building that we're getting so far like all i know about this book is that it's based in a world where there are like five kind of gods that are essentially the gods of certain elements like water and air and fire and then like stone or earth and then there's this other kind of like heavenly just being called like Celia or something like that. Salus? I should probably look up how to pronounce it. There's act actual pronunciation guides in the beginning of this book too which is cool. There's like literally the first few pages there's a glossary of who the different characters are. There's a pronunciation guide and I just feel like this book is very well done already and I think I'm really gonna like it. So I've been meaning to read this book for ages and I'm so excited to be reading it now. I'm using the word hatched as my movement vocabulary or movement term. That qualifies as movement in my eyes and it's definitely a verb. The one thing that I am a little annoyed about with my copy is that there are certain pages that are not attached to the book and it's not just one page, it's multiple pages. Like, look at this. Why? I don't know if it's just the beginning of the book, but I've already had like three pages do this. And I'm kind of annoyed because it's too late for me to return this book because I got it off of Amazon like three months ago. So that is annoying. So yeah, I, I have no idea who like the main characters are. We I just got into the viewpoint of one of the main characters, like one of the first main characters. All I know is she's like a woman and that's pretty much it. And I think that this has like an enemies to lovers maybe. And then there's dragons. And we've already been introduced to kind of how the dragons work in this world a little bit. They're basically centered at the poles of this world where it's either like very, very hot or very, very cold and like dark. But I'm really interested to kind of get more into the lore of the book. It just sounds like this is gonna be very rich world building, incredible prose and incredible writing. Hopefully a good enemies to lovers where it seems like more believable and when they're where they actually show instead of tell. I think that's my thing right now. I am sick of books being marketed as enemies to lovers and then 
the actual romance is like they are obsessed with each other but then they just say I hate this person and they're not actually making me believe that they hate the person because all of their actions would say otherwise you know what I mean that's the the reading update right now uh we'll be reading this book for my prompt for Berlin it is a 700 page book and this is a very disadvantageous move on my part but I'm hoping if I finish it I'm going to use the plain option so then I can double this book for points which will give it like 1400 points or something like that which would be awesome. The other book that I am currently reading just kind of on the side is Way of Kings by Brandon Sanderson. I've been reading this for the last three weeks or so and this is kind of in my audiobook that I've been just like listening to. Absolute Perfection reread is hitting. It is so good. I am obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. The book number five is coming out later this year and it's this oh my god this series is absolute gold. I have no words. If you don't know what the Stormlight Archive is just Google it, get on it. It's it's an epic fantasy series that's going to be like 10 books long. It's incredible. It, like the world building is amazing. The plot just continues to expand. The world just continues to expand. Like it, there's, there's not even words to describe the immensity of this book to try and keep it short and sweet. You know what I mean? If you like epic fantasies, get into it. I'm sure you've already read it if you like epic fantasies because it's extremely popular. But yeah, I'm about halfway through um, this book and I'm listening to it on audio, which is a great experience in my opinion. I think the narrators do a really, really good job. That's that's the reading update. Other just like what to expect in this video, this vlog is actually going to expand two weeks of June. I am at an out of town wedding next weekend during the face off weekend, which is kind of unfortunate timing. But because I'm not gonna be doing a lot of reading or filming over the weekend, I'm deciding to just span this vlog for the next two weeks and then hopefully have it be a pretty significant, um, you know, amount of time to watch. And hopefully I'll get through s at least some of the prompts. I'm really not expecting to be able to keep up with this readathon of how quickly the prompts have been dropping. Like I barely have gotten to Berlin, barely, which is prompt number three. I, I DNF my last book to get here. Genuine DNF, by the way, like I was totally not into it. I, uh, I, I expect me to fall behind and not to be pessimistic. I'm literally just being realistic. Like typically I can read like three to four books a month and I've read two books in one week, which is absolutely incredible to me. I think if I can read six books this month, uh, that will be an absolute success. I don't think I've read six books in a month. Literally can't even tell you last time. I, maybe 2020 when we were all at home forever. Yeah, other other than that, that's that's what's going on. I am very very looking forward to these next few weeks. This readathon has been so much fun. If you don't know what it is and you are interested in it, you there's still time to join. You can literally join as long as it's in June 2024, you can join. I will leave the links down below and yeah, I will see you guys in the next clip. I'm about to go make some kimchi fried rice for dinner. It's going to be amazing. Okay, bye. Sunday today and I'm about to start reading sprints in about 15 minutes uh, for the amazing readathon but I need to do a check-in because the fourth prompt is going to be released today and I haven't watched it yet and I want to do it on camera because I think that was really fun when I was editing it last week. I really enjoyed those parts where I was reacting to the prompt. So let's take a look together to see what this prompt is. Also you guys my airpods like the top broke off of it and I hate it. 
and I don't know how to fix it. I think the adhesive came off and it's really annoying. Let's take a look and see what this prompt is. You guys, I'm still only 10 pages in. Like, <laughs> I'm about to be so far behind. Also this morning, I was a productive bee Woke up super early because Reed went golfing with one of his friends and their tea time was 6.30 in the morning on a Sunday. Excuse me, but he woke me up at like six o'clock and then I didn't go back to bed. Went to the gym, did a leg day, which is my least favorite day. Went to Starbucks, got some coffee and I got a little cinnamon roll thing too. So I'm just gonna like have a cute little productive day on um, reading sprint. Okay, let's watch to see what this is oh my god i'm nervous you guys like i'm already <laughs> i know i shouldn't be stressing because like the point of this readathon is to just read books but like i really want to keep up like genuinely in my heart i want to keep up but like physically i can't keep up you know <laughs> what to be doing this summer we are headed to Paris, France. The Olympics are coming back to Paris in 2024, 100 years after the city last hosted the game. Paris! Event, with plans to use many of the same venues that were used in 1924. The Eiffel Tower in particular will be a prominent feature of the game. Oh, I've never been to Paris before, but I feel like that would be so fun. I've always wanted to go. Brie, can I just give you a shout out for giving us so many fun facts throughout the entire the entirety of this readathon like i'm like living for these little videos i i just love the fun facts the b-roll you got like it's just you 10 out of 10 this is incredible games are expected to attract millions of visitors from around the world the olympics are a time of celebration and unity and paris is ready to welcome the world with open arms to get to paris you will need to read a book that has won an award it can be any book competition it just has to be the winner of that competition good luck <laughs> this will be easy to do for a literary fiction book because a lot of literary fiction books are like submitted for awards oh my god wait does it have to be won an award or nominated i think it was one yeah it has to be won an award i have a bunch <gasps> let me look it up internet 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 Okay, I have a bunch of books from the Women's Prize for Fiction that I bought a few years ago that I haven't read. You guys, The Song of Achilles, that won the Women's Prize for Fiction. I have that and that is on my TBR. The Book of Form and Emptiness, I have that one too. Oh, the Book of Form and Emptiness, I feel like is a really depressing book and I feel like every time I think about reading that, like I don't want to because I feel like it's just gonna like really trigger me. It's a book about this little boy who's parent passed away and like I don't know I just feel like it's it's gonna be very triggering <laughs> or just I'm gonna feel a lot of feels you know but the song of Achilles would actually be a great choice for that you know what I don't even have to decide this right now because I'm not even to Berlin yet I still haven't even started that okay honestly I might go with the song of Achilles because I've been wanting to read that for forever but okay we gotta first make some headway into this and that's the goal for this morning on these reading sprints I haven't read anything else since I checked in with you yesterday I literally just like uploaded my video last night and then I really just wanted to play Stardew Valley so that's what I did um okay I need to get on reading sprints they start in eight minutes so cheers to a productive sunday morning let's hope i read a decent amount and i will check in with you guys later bye
Hello everyone, back again for an update. I meant to update yesterday, totally forgot. Okay, it is Wednesday today. Okay, first off, we're gonna update on this, okay? I'm obsessed, beyond obsessed, you guys. Okay, so I started this on Sunday. I'm on page like 164, 165. Oh my God, where have you been my whole life? I am so happy I pre-ordered the Fairy Loot edition. Oh, I don't know if I told you that, but I did. I'm obsessed with this book. It is so, 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 so good. Let me explain what's going on in the plot. It's speechless. Honestly, speechless. Okay, so we have our main character, Rave. She is our chica. She's like a member of this kind of rebel group that's trying to stay secret against the government. Like she's kind of like the assassin for them in some ways. Um, she'll do their dirty work. And she also has the ability to signal like the, the spirit of the wind. So one really interesting aspect of this fantasy world is that there are people with the ability to channel the spirits of like the earth, the wind, fire, I think water and then there's like a fifth spirit, which not many people can channel, which is kind of a focus of this book, but she can channel the spirit of the wind, okay? Being like she can control people's amount of air that they can get in their lungs. She can control how hard the wind whips around someone, like all this kind of stuff. So she really is able to play up her skills um, in the duties that she carries out. She kind of gets herself into a, some sticky situations sometimes. And literally this plot kicks off within the first hundred pages of this book. And it's at the point where you just can't put it down. Like last night, I was on page like 80 when I sat down to read last night. And I'm like, okay, it's like 10 o'clock. I'll maybe read for 15 minutes then I have to go to bed because I have to wake up early. All of a sudden it was 11 o'clock. All of a sudden I had been reading for an hour and I got another 80 pages in. And it, it, it's just one of those books that you can't put down. And like, you're just constantly turning the pages and the time is passing like none other. You're not even looking at the clock because you're so absorbed in the book. I, okay, I can see how you would not like the writing. It is quite like prosy and like flowery. Like there's a lot of adjectives. There's a, she describes things very distinctly and it kind of goes overboard in the descriptiveness of things, but I don't mind it. <laughs> and I can see how people could probably get annoyed by it's probably too flowery for them, but I like it. Um, I personally enjoy this kind of writing style. I just think that this author is doing a really great job of crafting the world and of world building and of really bringing this vision to life. The interesting part of this world too is that it's set up like there's a full map in the beginning which is amazing of the entire place so you can like really map out where everything is but there's like a wall that goes through the entirety of the middle portion I think of the world and there's an underground part of the world that's kind of like dug into the ground near this wall which I think is a really interesting concept so I don't know we're just getting to world build and explore like none other we're kind of following two different storylines we have the storyline of Rave who is our main character and then you also have these diary entries from a little girl who we don't know much about yet. That storyline is kind of bringing us more into the dragon aspect of the book. Again, we don't know a ton about. All we pretty much know is that people who ride dragons or have dragons, it's pretty much, I think, royalty and it's very few and far between and it's very difficult to go get a dragon. They live on the poles of this con of this world in which it's extremely cold or extremely hot. I think they live on the cold portion of the world. But basically the dragons, they live their life on the world and then when it's their time to pass, they go up into the sky and then curl up into a ball and like stay in the ball. And I think that the whole book is gonna center around maybe these dragons start hatching because it's called when the moon hatched and maybe they start coming back down to earth or down to this this world. I'm not really sure. That is still an entire mystery, but I am just in love with it. I think the way that this inciting incident has just propelled me to want to keep reading and want to keep going, I'm in love with it. Would recommend, I feel like there's one other thing I wanted to say too. Oh, haven't gotten into the romance part yet, but we definitely have some options here. And I am super intrigued as to how this romance plot is gonna play out. 
And again, loving how this is not romance forward, at least not right now, it's very fantasy forward, which that is pr my preferred proportions in a fantasy romance novel. So obsessed. I did start annotating it too, but then it was taking me too long to annotate. So now I stopped because I just want to keep reading. <laughs> You know what I mean? Okay, so that's reading update. Doing good on that front, except guess who hasn't made any progress to any city in the last handful of days? Guys, the way that I'm so behind right now in the Amazing Readathon, not even funny, okay? I am now officially two legs behind. Two. <laughs> I don't think I'm catching up anytime soon. I am going out of town this weekend. It is face off weekend this weekend and I can't participate. So <laughs> that is what it is. I knew I knew this going into being a co-host on the readathon and I told Rhea about it too. Like I have a wedding and like, I'm just not gonna be able to read this weekend. My goal is to just complete the book by the end of the weekend. I think that would be good for me. And then I can move on to Song of Achilles. But there is another prompt that was dropped today. <laughs> So I thought like, okay, even though I may or may not be able to get to this prompt, it's still fun to, to uh, react to. Um, so I think I'm going to do that. And I want to go through this next prompt together with you. I have no idea what it is because I've been busy with work. God, I am just like work weeks really have made me struggle with the, keeping up with this readathon. Truly. She's already announced the prompt. I totally missed it when she sent it out to the host beforehand too. So that's on me. South okay. Africa is renowned for its beauty and iconic landmarks. Table Mountain. <gasps> Cape Town. Oh my gosh, this looks so pretty. This mountain's unique climate and geology have created a habitat that is ideal for a wide range of plant life. Some of the most iconic plant species found on Table Mountain include- <gasps> Plants! Are we gonna do something with plants? Oh, I bet it's gonna be a something with a plant on the cover. <gasps> Wait, I would have the perfect book for that. I knew it. Oh my god, you guys, I actually have the perfect one. I actually have the perfect one. Oh, the way that this book was made for this prompt. Hold on, I'm gonna go get the book. She was waiting for it. Literally, could you have picked a better book for this prompt? This book has been waiting for it. It is her time to shine. Like She has been sitting patiently on my shelf waiting for this prompt to drop so now she can be read. The Island of Missing Trees. This was a Women's Prize for Fiction nominee. I think in 2022, I have heard such great things about this book. Literally, I, I feel like I've not heard a bad thing about it at all. I know it is kind of a like literary fiction style of romance. Um, they think in the theme or genre of normal people uh, where these two people are on a Greek island and it's basically, I think, about their relationship over years and something about this island or like there's a tree on this island that like watches their relationship or something. I'm not really sure how the tree plays a part of it, but I know that there's like a tree that's a factor into this relationship. But I am super, super excited to read this. And I have literally been waiting for the perfect time and it is now the perfect time. So guys, look at all the lip thick I'm gonna have. We're gonna finish off When the Moon Hatched, whenever I finish it off, and then gonna move on to Song of Achilles and then we'll get to The Island of Missing Trees if the month doesn't end before that. <laughs> I love how I'm just like now planning out these books, but like God knows if I'm gonna actually be able to keep up and read these. I really, really do hope to finish When the Moon Hatched uh, within the week because it's so good. Like, honestly, I think I'm just gonna spend my evening reading it because I am in love with it. It's amazing. And I feel like I can actually get through it pretty quickly. So that's the check-in. I hope you guys are enjoying the video. I hope you guys are enjoying the chaos that is ensuing. And I'm gonna try and remember to do some more B-roll because I feel like I've been so bad at that over the past few weeks. Okay, bye. Hello everyone, it is Tuesday today. I know it's been literally the entire weekend um, since I checked in with you last. We were out of town at a wedding. We, there was festivities going on. It was like a lot. And then work this week has been a little bit rough for the first start of the week. Yeah, that's where I've been. And I haven't felt like filming an update because I literally haven't read anything from when the moon hatched since I last checked in with you. Like literally zero. That doesn't mean I haven't been reading. I listened to like at least three hours of Way of Kings on the way down when I was driving. And then we actually ended up listening to a lot of Golden Sun as well. I'm like halfway through Golden Sun right now by Pierce Brown. So not to say that I didn't read anything because I definitely did. It was just like not the right things. I tried to listen to this book on audio while we were in the car. 
you guys cannot with the narrator. The narrator really, it just, it's one of those where I have like a visceral reaction to how the narrator is narrating the story and I absolutely hated it. Like I tried to listen to a few chapters of it and it was just like giving me a major ick and I'm like, this is ruining my enjoyment of the book. I must read this physically in order to enjoy it. So I decided that's the only way I'm gonna do it. But I've just like not really been in the mood to read the last few days, um, like physically read. I've been very much like listening to stuff. Like like I said, I've listened to um, at least another two hours more of Way of Kings. I think I'm halfway through that now. And it's just chef's kiss. It is just so, so good. And oh my God, I, I cannot get over that book. And then also Golden Sun by Pierce Brown. So the reason I started listening to this again is because it actually was prompted by one of the social media posts for um, Amazing Readathon. It was like post a picture of like the books that inspire you of the Olympic rings or something like that. And I took a picture of like Red Rising, Golden Sun and Morning Star. And I was like, why did I just put down Golden Sun. Why did I, I read about nine chapters of it like a month ago and then I just kind of stopped reading it because I ran out of um, audiobook hours on Spotify, which that was how I was listening to it at the time. But then last week, Reed spontaneously read part two, three, and four of Golden Sun and now he's on Morningstar and he's like, Kara, why would you not continue on with Golden Sun? So he'd like made me listen to it when you're we driving to the wedding and it is just so, so good. Oh my God, like it's, that book is so action packed. It's just like nonstop one after the other after the other. If you don't know what the Red Rising series is about, it's basically about this dystopian world where humans can no longer live on Earth and they speak in terraforming Mars. Um, and you're following the main character as his entire knowledge of his world gets flipped on its head and action on action on action on action. It is amazing. It is amazing. Pierce Brown does not hold back. And I'm just so excited to keep going with the book. So I'm about halfway through that right now. And again, it's not like I'm not reading. I'm just choosing to read very chunky fantasies. <laughs> and I know I'm supposed to be reading general fiction, but like, okay, I'm such a mood reader. If I'm not enjoying a book, I literally will not read it. And I'm just, this is what my mood calls for at the current moment. And this is what my circumstances have led me to. So that's where I'm at. In terms of this book, I am definitely going to keep going with it. I just have to get in the mood to physically read it. This is really not the right book for me to re be reading during a readathon, but I am really loving it. Like I've read about 200 pages of it so far and it's just so good. Like it, it is such a novel that is rooted in fantasy and I'm I'm really, really enjoying it this far. So I feel like I'd have to get back into it because I haven't picked it up in like four days or so, but hoping that once I jump back in, I won't be able to put it down. Again, the action is getting packed on in here as well. And the world building in this book is amazing. Like this is some of the best world building I've read in a really long time. And I'm really, really um, pleased with the story. I, I It does really feel like I could give this a book of five stars. I'm I really like the writing style as well. Like, I feel like I've heard people have some complaints with the writing style that it's like really flowery, but to be honest, I'm really loving it. And I'm really enjoying how the, the way this author is setting up the narrative, setting up the world, not only in a typical like storytelling fashion, but she's also throwing these like vignettes in there of these notes that we're picking up on. And like, that's how we're understanding the more of the backstory of the world with the dragons and whatnot. So this is genuinely very, very good. I'm just such a slow physical reader. So it's set me back so much in terms of trying to keep up with this readathon. So that's where I'm at in terms of a reading update. I just want to give like a vibe check as far as how I'm feeling with the readathon. She's struggling, guys. Um, the fact that I'm still on the third prompt and everyone's literally on like the ninth prompt, like leaves me panicking. Um, Brie did post an update that you can you can like skip legs if you pay like GRC. And you know what, to be honest with you, I think I might do that if I end up finishing this book. I think I'm gonna set my goal for the rest of the month is to finish this book and then I at least want to finish one more general fiction novel. If I could read The Song of Achilles, that would be amazing. But I just wanna read at least one other general fiction novel 
to feel like I like truly partook in the readathon and committed to reading more of the general fiction prompts that I had set out to. I am trying not to put myself into a little bit of a shame spiral because it feels like everyone in the Discord is like keeping up so, so, so well. But I do know that the goal of a readathon is to just enjoy reading books and to relish in reading books with other people and have a community of people to push you to read more books. So I'm trying not to get too hard on myself and the fact that I haven't been able to keep up, but at the same time have really much been enjoying the community aspect of this readathon. It has been truly amazing to be a part of. It's so incredible how Brie and all of the producers and co-hosts have created such a great community of book lovers of all different types of genres. So I am really enjoying that aspect. I'm just trying to like not be too hard on myself and the fact that I struggle to read more than three or four books a month. That's where I'm at. Um, I'm really hoping I continue to um, be on the up and up from here because this week at work has just like not been too great. But you guys, the one thing that is really keeping me going is that this weekend I am going to visit my booktube besties and I'm so, so excited. I'm going to Texas on Friday morning and I'm gonna be able to see all my besties and I'm just so, so, so incredibly excited to feel even further connected with the booktube community. So yeah, this has been a little bit of a long update but I feel like I just had to like get my peace out. You know what I mean? Yeah, hope you're enjoying the vlog. Peace out, Girl Scout. I'll see you in the next update. Bye. Um, hey, guess what? I have read, listen to, this much of this book since my last check-in with you, go me. So I talked about this book in my June TBR. It's called High Achiever by Tiffany Jenkins. It's a kind of like a memoir of her detailing her experience of getting arrested and going to jail. She was a former drug, drug addict and she's basically talking about that entire experience throughout this book in a very compelling way, okay? We got short chapters. We got things happening left and right that actually make you think, oh my gosh, I can't believe this happened to someone and that this was this person's life. It's like twisting and turning at every corner, honestly. Very, very fast paced, like, reading style. I had a coworker recommend this book to me and she said she read it in literally two sittings. I think they gave it to me like a month ago or so and I was like, oh yeah, maybe I'll like think about it. And then yesterday after my check-in, I was a little down bad and feeling bad about myself because I just feel like I haven't like been in a really big reading mood over the last week and I feel like I haven't done enough for the readathon at this point. Even though, again, it's so, all the, the whole point is to just to try and read books. It doesn't matter. There's no stakes on the line, you know? I digress. But I was like, what if I had a fun audiobook? I was really into listening to a podcast yesterday and I was just like, why don't I switch it up with an audiobook? Started this last night. Listened to it while I played Stardew Valley. I probably listened to over 100 pages last night, just like sitting and playing my game and listening to this. And I am so invested. <laughs> the, the writing of this book is not mind blowing by any means. She's really just like straight up telling a story, but I'm liking the audiobook version because she, the author is the narrator and she's like getting into character character of like all of the people that she was in jail with and like talking in their voices and their accents and she's making it a quite an immersive experience. This book reminds me so much of Orange is the New Black. If you guys remember that Netflix show like in like 2014 or whatever it was. She's just talking about many of the different experiences that you hear about when people go to jail and it's really eye-opening how people are treated in the correctional system. As someone who has never had that experience before, you know, it's a very limited viewpoint from the general population of like what being in jail is actually like. And she is really delving into her experience. Some of the situations and living situations that these people are put in are terrible and the story that she is telling is really keeping me invested and right now we have kind of gotten the thick of like her jail time experience once she leaves she is going to go to rehab and she's kind of talking about the experience of starting rehab and starting recovery and stuff like that this woman's experience is so unlike my own but at the same time i am very 
interested in it and interested in learning about it. And it's a really compelling and quick read. So would recommend, honestly, it's it's pretty quick and um, I'm enjoying it. And it's a nonfiction. So although this does not count towards the, the general fiction prompt style, I am quite glad I'm, I, I gave it a shot. So yeah, that's what I've been doing um, for the past 24 hours is literally just playing Stardew Valley, listening to this book, and I need to go start packing for this weekend. You guys, I'm so excited. So I'm hopeful, I'm hopeful that by tomorrow night I can finish the book, and then I can say I finished a book in this video, which would be great, and I can use this book for that Berlin prompt, that movement prompt, because achieve, I can achieve, achieve is a verb. I'm gonna count it, okay? <laughs> I'm so far behind, does it even matter if I count it at this point? I. Just wanted to give that little check-in. I'm gonna go pack and I will talk to you guys later. I'm just glad I'm on the up and up. Bye. Okay, hi everyone. Check in. So today is Thursday. Um, yes, I did get a haircut. Hi. Um, I think I got it a little too short. I was a little overly ambitious. I, I just wanted, like, I felt like my hair was so long and I was just like, just chop it. Just do a nice summer chop. And then I got in the car and looked at my hair and I'm like, Maybe I want a little, like two inches too short. If it was like down to here, I think I'd be a little bit more comfortable, but I'm just like, Bit of a bit of a difference here for me. So I want to give a check in on my reading update. Guys, I'm at 60%. I'm on a roll. Okay, the fact that I started this book two days ago, and I'm at 60%. We're cruising, babe. Let me get my review. I'm not bored. Okay, I'm not bored with it. It's just starting to slow a little bit because I feel like I'm not getting what I want from this book. And let me explain. So the book so far has basically detailed this woman's journey, being in jail, coming out from jail, entering into a rehab, and struggling with overcoming this addiction, okay? So she's addicted to opioids, which is extremely sad, and also um, very real discussion in terms of the opioid epidemic that is going on in the United States. So it's giving good insight into that, I guess, and, and just kind of like her, her story in terms of like once she has exited jail. The part that I feel like I am missing is all of the previous stuff. Like how did she get to where she is? The author alludes to the fact that like before her drug addiction, she had a very stable job. She was very involved in her community. You know, it seemed like a a generally positive living environment. But the part that I feel like I'm missing is how did she go from that to where we ended up in her addiction in terms of like the crimes she committed and going to jail? That's the part that I'm missing. Everything this book has discussed and talked about is everything after she went to jail and when she started to get into rehab and all that kind of stuff. And there have been a few different times where she has been tempted to go back to drugs and we're, I think we're getting some kind of flashback moments, but this far, I feel like I have not connected the dots as to the way that she was pre-addiction and her addict phase. Does that make sense? It just feels like I'm missing that chunk of like the story of how we got here. But as far as the discussion of the criminal justice system and corrections facilities as a whole, recovery process and, you know, slipping back into addiction and kind of like the mind of an addict in the later stages, we're getting good discussion and kind of like insight about that. It's just, we're missing the how we got here part. I am enjoying it. The writing style is like not sublime. It's totally fine, but at the same time, this person is just kind of telling her story and it doesn't need to be super prosy, if that makes sense. It, she's just telling it exactly how it was and keeping it real. I mean, love it. Yeah, I am enjoying it. I'm probably gonna give it a three star. And unfortunately, I'm not gonna finish this book before the vlog ends because 
I am going out of town to see my booktube besties tomorrow and so my plan is to end the vlog here and kind of pick up where I leave off starting when I get back. So I'm probably gonna finish this book over the weekend or like on my way to see my friends but I'm pretty sure my rating and feelings towards this book of how I am right now is going to be the way that I would rate it when I finish. Like I feel like my feelings are not really gonna change the further that I get into it even though I still have 40% of the book left. So yeah I think overall I'm probably gonna give it a three star but I do think this is a good book if anyone is interested in kind of like the corrections process or if anyone just likes a good thriller and is interested in reading about someone's like actual experience going through the justice system and jail and like a correctional facility and the reality of that situation I think this would be a really great book to pick up it's really really fast paced. The chapters are literally two pages long and it's just one of those books that I feel like I'm just like flying through. Like even listening to it on audio, not putting it down. Like literally listening to it in the car, listening to it while I'm cleaning. It's It's been on in the background the last two days. Once I do end up finishing the book, my plan is to submit it using the highest tier option, spending all of the coin um, so I can get double the points because girl, haven't finished a book in like over a week, so. That's been that. So yeah, that's pretty much my overall reading thoughts. Haven't picked up When the Moon Hatched in a few days, so I have nothing new to report on that, but hoping to get back to that um, probably once I finish this book. This is the, where I'm gonna end the vlog. Like I said, going out of town tomorrow, so I'm gonna be starting a new vlog, like vlogging the weekend with my besties, which I'm so excited about. What have I learned over this past week? Um, number one, don't be so hard on myself, even though everyone's reading so much during the readathon. Number two, you're doing great, sweetie. And number three, I'm so excited to see my friends and I'm so lucky to have friends that I have found through this platform. So if you've made it this far into the video, leave a, you know, like the twin emoji, the twin dancers, leave one of those emojis in the comments below. And I will see you guys next week for the last week of the amazing readathon. I can't believe it's already going into the last week. This month has gone by so quickly. Even though I've had a reading slump of a week, I'm probably still going to have finished four books by the end of this month, which is the most books that I've read in a really, really long time in one month. So patting myself on the back for this one. And I'll see you guys next week. Have a great one. Peace and love everyone. Bye.